Okay, good afternoon to those who, those who are still in the room. Uh, welcome to the Wikidata workshop. Um, please note on the program, there is an Etherpad link to the items. For this session, we have um, Associate Professor Toby Hudson, otherwise known as 99 of 9, as a username, and Margaret Donald, both talking about um, aspects of working with Wikidata. So this is as much a workshop, and but it's very useful. And I would commend both uh, Toby and Margaret as very good introducers to issues that come with working with um, Wikidata. When I was at the London Wikimania in 2014, there were small workshops. As of a few minutes ago, there were 100 million four hundred and eighteen thousand and fifty four separate items so between 2014 and now there's been a few items added uh, i would uh, like to welcome toby to come up and do his presentation thank you hello and welcome to the wikidata session i'm super pleased that we're continuing on after a bunch of well education talks but also linguistic talks, because I think you're going to see, hopefully, that the linguistic aspect of Wikidata is super important. And when I was thinking about the audience we might have today, uh, I don't often present Wikidata to audiences who have so many languages. Uh, and I think that's a key and crucial thing that we're going to make use of today. And, um, and so thank you very much for coming to Australia. Thank you very much for uh, speaking my language because I'm unfortunately only monolingual, but I would love to connect with your languages and I, I hope I'll show you how. Um, so I've been, uh, my wiki involvement has just turned 18. I've been uh, in the Wikimedia project um, for 18 years and uh, have moved around a bit with Wikipedia and Commons being particular interests, but now also Wikidata. Uh, so I'm going to tell you mostly about Wikidata and also about a, an app, uh, a browser extension called Entity Explosion, which I hope will make your use of Wikidata, take your use of Wikidata up to another level, uh, but I'll get to that. So let me just um, uh, start moving through. Uh, this presentation is partly based on uh, a Glamour module, which I think Mike was involved with and um, Wikimedia Australia uh, have been uh, supporting. So thank you for that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we were all a little bit on the same page in terms of what Wikidata is and how it works, just in case some of us are new to it. Okay, so hopefully you can see that on Zoom. Um, I'm just uh, apparently, so my video panel and I Closing meeting controls. All right. So, um, so this is the rough outline of just the introduction to Wikidata. Uh, it's simplified a bit. We're going to talk about languages, linked open data, QIDs, and triples, and a bunch of stuff that you uh, you might have heard words uh, but not understood before. Here's what it, Wikidata looks like if you jump in on a page and look at an article uh, or an item, as we call it. Uh, this item I've chosen is a genus of insects. I chose it um, because uh, these insects have a little logo on their wing, and the logo is a little bit like Entity Explosion's logo. So I've chosen to show you this one. But the first thing you'll see on this page is a languages section, because Wikidata is multilingual, fully multilingual. I, you can see some languages on my page, but you might see different languages on your page. And in fact, we could click all entered languages and see it on uh, in all entered languages. And this, I think, is part of the crucial opportunity of, of having um, all of us here together uh, across ESIAP, uh, because there are so many languages represented in the room, but those languages are not well represented on Wikidata. In fact, we looked up the other day um, Spanish, which you would think, oh, Spanish should be pretty well represented. Only half of the properties are translated into Spanish. So you can see that uh, there's a lot to go uh, in, in terms of language translation. And when I say properties, 
I'm actually talking about one of the core ingredients of, of Wikidata. So I'll show you um, that in a second. So given that languages are so important and what shows up for you actually depends on what language you speak, uh, I'd love you to, as our first activity, set up your user page. So if you've not done this on Wikidata, all I need you to do is go to wikidata.org, go to your user page. I know you're pretty familiar with user pages and then put this kind of string on your page. That's all, that's all we need. It's a bit of complicated tech, um, uh, template string, but this basically shows Wikidata which languages you want to see. And it's kind of pretty important um, to what you want to see. So, for, so uh, let me just brief, do try and copy this onto your page, uh, but I'll just briefly explain what it's doing. It's making a, a box on the side of your page telling other people what languages you speak or what languages you want to, to see. Uh, and then you need these language codes, right? Two letter or three letter codes, depending on, oh, well, actually they can be even longer, but um, codes that represent the language that you are speaking. And so you'll recognize EN for English, uh, SEB is Cebuano, uh, and uh, ZH is uh, one of the Chinese uh, scripts, but um, but it was there was an interesting discussion of that this morning. So thank you for for that. Um, so if anyone's having trouble putting this or something like it on your wiki page, uh, stick your hand up, and and I think someone will be there to to help out. Um, put your languages. Don't put Chinese for everyone or Cebuano for everyone. Just put your languages. Unfortunately, mine is um, my only speaking language is English, but I put other languages in this list. Uh, with the note that I don't know, know them, uh, to make sure I see them. Um, and so you, you're welcome to put more on that you can see. Um, and there's a way to say that you don't speak them, but don't worry too much. You put dash zero if you, if you get. So no one had a problem with that. Everyone's got, uh, hands up, who's got this on their user page? Uh, uh, something like this. Uh, who, hands up, who doesn't have this on the user page? But, <laughs> okay, hands up who's not listening. That's fine. Um, but I would love you all to, to do this, if, even if you've not edited Wikidata before, because I think you'll see that it's, it's quite important for you. Okay, so um, this is the next thing you'll see further down a Wikidata page. Uh, you'll see a list of what we call statements. And so these statements, I'll read them out to you just in case it's too small. It says taxon name, and there's a string taxon rank, and there's a, a blue genus, it says. But that because it's blue, that means there's another item. It's, we've linked this item to another item called genus. Uh, you, you'll see what links mean later. Um, parent taxon is linked to a, a biological um, parent of this uh, particular genus. And, and so on. So we have commons categories where you can find pictures of this and uh, main categories where you can find a category of all the, these animals. Um, that's what you see on the page. What does it do? What's the point of this? Well, as we heard cheers yesterday for linked open data. So I understand that many of you are on board with linked open data, but just to, to make sure we're connected, here's one of our items, the National Portrait Gallery, uh, I think it's the US national one, so um, I, I don't want to pick on any particular country, but the point is each of those statements that we showed on the previous page uh, is going somewhere. It's linking off to other items, and we've essentially established a network of concepts, a network of cross-domain concepts across the whole of all of the concepts that Wikipedia covers and more, 100 million, as Tom said. So you'll see why this uh, network matters, uh, but let me just briefly um, show you what the Wikidata code for each of those links is. We have, if, if say you wanted to represent this fact, that Sydney is the capital of New South Wales. That's a fact in English, in the English language. We'd like to translate it to a fact in Wikidata. And the way we do that is to make a triple. The, the identifier for Sydney is Q3130. The 
meaning of capital or the, the property for capital of is 13 P1376. And you notice it gets a different um, prefix. The P means a property. It's always the middle one of these triples. Uh, and, and in this case, the triple has a value, which is another item. It's connecting it with the New South Wales item. And we put that triple, when we're entering it, we put that triple on the page of Sydney. And so Sydney, the page of Sydney is now connected to the page of New South Wales. Or you could say Sydney is named after some guy. Uh, but you can see, so we've got the English way of saying those into some numbers, these triples. Uh, these properties I mentioned already, and there are about 10,000 of them. And if your language does not know what P1376 is, then you won't be able to tell that Sydney is the capital of New South Wales. You'll just know that Sydney is somehow related to New South Wales. So this central one, these properties are crucial to translate. Uh, and so that's why the next activity is actually to find out how many of your language, uh, how many of these properties are translated into your language. So if I can get you to go to w.wiki slash, and there's a short link to get you somewhere else, but the slash goes 5ZB5. This is case sensitive, so you need the Z and the B to be lowercase. So if you can all just go there, I hope that we share, let me just click on it as well. Um, Alex, do you think it will share? Oh, you can, oh right, okay. Um, yes, thank you. This is good, um, but I just need to adapt. So it's taken us to a search page on Wikidata. Um, and uh, the language that, you, oh, sorry, I can't point, but, um, but if, you, if you see in the search field, it says minus has label colon TL. Uh, so I ch chose the language Tagalog um, to do this search in. Um, if you've got a different language, could you change your TL to the short code for your language? So the two letter or three letter code and just type in that. And then you'll see which ones are not translated in your language. Uh, and so here are some, some examples. Um, you, you, depending on what field you edit, you may recognize some of these things in English or not. Uh, the first one says series ordinal. That's a, what, a weird English um, term, but it, it, may, it means it says position of an item in its parent series. So like, are you first or second or third? one or two or three so the value will be one or two or three for this thing and and it, it's like what order are you in um if you know a way of translating now since since i've chosen tagalog if i knew tagalog uh, and i could translate series ordinal into my language then uh the first thing that i'd love you to encourage you to do is to go to that item like click on series ordinal and since your user page already has your language on it, it'll have a blank in the label that there will be no label for this property. So if you can try and put a new label into Wikidata properties, that would be super important for the development of Wikidata in your language. Um, it is possible for a single person to do an entire language because there are only 10,000. I know it sounds big, but it, it's doable. Um, so if you're looking for a mission, that would be a great mission to take up. Uh, does anyone need help with that? Again, we have uh, people who, or who's, who's managed, first of all, who's managed to change a label in a property? No, no, let me start right at the start. Who managed to search for their language and see some missing properties? Ha, ha, hand, try, try that. If you haven't managed that, so the way to do that, how do I go back to these slides? Pick up the Toby for people. Some people didn't do I wonder what? Sorry. Uh, we'll link link. Yeah, we'll go to. Sorry, we'll go. I'm trying to get the link back. Uh, sorry. Okay. Apologies that um I shouldn't have clicked away from it. Um. So wonderful. The link. The link. The link is is. I mean, you could type it all out. Has minus has label, but uh thank you, Alex. Sorry, I, I didn't even see what you did. But um, there you go. Okay. So everyone, no, no, don't worry. This is great. Um, 
So, uh, so there's the link, w.wiki slash 5zb5. Uh, go there. It'll be a search page. Choose your language instead of TL. Choose your code. Uh, and then... Um, uh, then you'll see the list of properties that are missing that we really need you for. Um, I'll just dwell here for a minute. If you do have um, need help, um, stick your hand up. And I, I know there are helpers keen to help with this. Uh, help or comment? Sorry, uh, comment. Help. So I tried to scan, and it was one that there are no results where English is available. Correct. So then, so you could see, like, you know, for my know a little bit of Chinese, like, if you see a that that would be amazing. Yeah. So you're right. English is a, an exception. It's it's one of the only ones that um is has every property translated. Uh, but other real majority languages massively spoken across the world, Spanish, we looked up with Heidi the other day and, and half, but anyway. Um, okay, I'm going to press on, but if you do get stuck there, um, do stick your hand up. I'm sure someone will be keen to help. So what's the point of all of this? What do we do with Wikidata? You will, if you're Wikipedians, you will have seen Wikidata used already. Here are some places you will have seen it. You may not know that it's using Wikidata, but see the language link on the top right? All of those connections to other languages are because a single Wikidata item has listed all of those Wikipedia articles as the same concept. So they're all joined together. The next one, you might not have noted. This is the population of the suburb we're in, Ultimo. And on many Wikipedias, including the English Wikipedia, our editors used to have to go every five years, and when the Australian census came out, every five years, our editors had to go through tens of thousands of articles and add in the new population. But Wikimedia Australia recently funded a project to automate that if the data is on Wikidata. So these population, this population is now drawn from Wikidata. We can upload it automatically to Wikidata during, due to a certain process, but once it's there, we can draw it immediately onto Wikipedia without all of that editing. That was a huge advance. Thank you, Wikimedia Australia. Thank you, Maya Williams, who did the work there. Uh, that is a, a, a really useful link. And I know this is just one of many ways that Wikidata can be used in info boxes, but it's a pretty critical one for Australians. So I, I wanted to show that off. The other place you'll see Wikidata used is in the taxon bar down the bottom or the, or the um, authority control box down the bottom of most Wikipedia articles. And you, if you're an editor, you may have just known to put that in brackets, brackets, authority control. But how does it get it? It goes and gets all of those identifiers from Wikidata. Now, here's another kind of use which you might not be familiar with. Uh, this is a query on Wiki, the Wikidata query service. Uh, you can build them with code or you can build this query builder, but I just want to show you roughly what they can do that you can aggregate information on many of these items all into one answer. So if you've got a question that depends on data from lots of items, you can put them all together with a, a bit of a query. And so this map is a map of all the volcanoes in the world, or at least the ones that Wikidata knows about. And it's a single query. You can literally just click a query and run it. But what I like about that is once you get all of that data together, it shows you something about geology. It shows you lines and perhaps rings of fire that you can't get a sense of unless you have all the data together. And so Wikidata having all the data together is uh, a crucial kind of point of collection. Uh, the next type of use of Wikidata, you again may have heard this, this, this is the kind of thing that gets uh, tweeted, 
higher level subject browsers. So the one that I'm going to tell you about is Entity Explosion, but you will have seen these ones as well. Scolia is a great project about academic literature, which and all of the contributors to academic literature and prizes and so on, so on, so on. Um, which so it focuses on a field, but then makes this browser where you don't have to know anything about Wikidata to use it. Same goes with art. If you want to browse art and you don't want to code Wikidata or anything, you just go to this website and click around because it is drawing everything from Wikidata. So uh, now we're up to the stage where, so we know what Wikidata can do kind of broadly. Um, what's in Wikidata? How are we going so far? And in, in particular, I want to concentrate on these properties because I think they're really, really important. These are, sorry for the, <laughs> the small text. I'll, I'll read it to you just to make sure you know. Um, this is counting what types of property we have on Wikidata. And I'm going to tell you about the two biggest circles. I'll start with the second biggest circle, which is wiki base item. These are properties that link to other items. So they can make that network that I was talking about. And then I'm going to talk about the big circle, external IDs. So here is the, um, here's a query which shows the power of the network. Uh, if you're linking to other items, like a movie might link to an actor, right? It might say, oh, the actor in this movie was X and Y and Z, all these people. Uh, similarly, the movie might have a date associated with publication and perhaps um, the actor might have a date associated with their birth because of course, it's a, prop, it's a kind of true thing about that person. What, what's nice about having a network is, oh, we've got two dates, we could subtract them. What does that do? Subtract the date of the publication minus the birth date. Ah, it tells you the age of the actor when the film was published. Okay, let's aggregate those and figure out how old all the actors in films are. But let's split it according to their gender, because that's also in Wikidata. And so the answer you get is this. You see the Hollywood beauty bias. There is the age of women and there is the age of men in published films, okay? This is a kind of query, kind of simple query, but a kind of query that can be readily adapted and only works because of the power of this cross domain. It, it, uh, Wikidata covers people and films. And if we just switch out, author for so actor for author and movie for publication we can rerun the query about scientific articles perhaps find out whether we've we've got a beauty bias i'm a chemist so you know maybe 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 i'm uh, punished for my lack of beauty or not no it's i'm not um there is a different kind of bias uh-huh the age doesn't matter so much but there's something going on there as well and so you can start asking queries about all kinds of biases, both biases within Wikidata, but also bi real biases, biases in the real world that we're representing. And I, sometimes I put up this, uh, this is a colleague of mine who was right on the other end of this and helped ask me to help help with the publication. So I'm, I'm pleased to remember him when he was 92 publishing away. Uh, okay, so I've, I've talked about the second biggest circle. I'll talk about the biggest circle. Uh, that is identifiers. Here, here's what they look like on the page. You just get a list of numbers. And it seems a bit useless, right? Why would you spend all your time putting in a number? Well, here's why. Because those numbers represent places on the internet where that same subject is described. This person is described in her publications. She's also described on Twitter. She has a Twitter account. And imagine if we could go from one place to the other. We want, uh, Elon Musk has real trouble trying to verify people. Wikidata can do that. If you have a Twitter account and it's connected to a Wikidata item, then we know who that is and we can connect it up. We can find out who Vina is. We can find all of her subsequent bits. There's a similar example from chemistry. We can connect up uh, 
databases about fragment masses with databases about thermal properties because they at their core are representing molecules so the molecule is represented in all of those um, databases and computers understand this we, we know about the linked open, open data cloud but we'd like to be able to use it as people and so that's the objective of this app this entity explosion app which is available on Chrome or Firefox. And um, if you go here, you can or just search the name Entity Explosion, you'll find it. And I'd love you to install it. It's really easy to install. I just want to show you a quick demonstration because it actually lets you do those cross web links. It allows you to discover links and information about whatever topic you care about on all the other sites. So imagine, ignore that. Uh, imagine you were on a page called iNaturalist. You'd contributed a picture and somebody had identified that picture as a platypus. That's a simple example. You probably have seen platypus and you probably already know what it is. Imagine you're on platypus. Look up the top right of um, this screen, just near my photo, uh, on the left of my photo, in the small circle of photo up the top, uh, two buttons to the left is the little symbol representing entity explosion. It looks like, um, a, a, yeah, I can't point, sorry, or oh, maybe I can, but you can see it. It's two across. It's a little red, uh, it's got like six little red circles. Uh, when you're browsing around, if, if that ever goes red, that means we can use this. We can, we can get something out of it. So if we click, uh, if we click there, that's, ah, oh, should have gone to the next slide. If you click there, whenever it lights up red, what happens is you get a drop down that drags all the information out of Wikidata about the platypus. And it knew to do that because uh, you see in the green box, iNaturalist in its URL had a, a number that was one of those identifiers. So whenever we put identifiers in, we are aiding this massive connectivity and um, so I'd, I'd love you to experiment and play with that. It's fully multilingual. We can do this in Chinese. We can do this in your language. You just click up the top. That, that top box is meant to say language. Um, and uh, you can choose your language. Um, it's, it's actually a little better than it was when I took this snapshot. Um, so this is still in development. If you want to develop, come and join me and, and tell me. But uh, please try it on whatever you're interested in, places or organizations or people or chemical compounds or, or organisms. Uh, it should work for all of them. It should work for over 6,000 different sites because we have over 6,000 different properties. And it'll work best if those are translated into your language, remember. So otherwise you'll be missing some lines. Uh, it works on, you know, all of these things, which means it's a great way of telling people about Wikidata without actually needing Wikidata. People can use this. I've presented this to chemists without ever mentioning Wikidata because actually they can use it to do stuff across the web um, just with a, a little entity explosion button. Uh, they don't need to worry about what's behind it. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved, it's free, open source. It's in every language, your privacy is protected. And uh, here are some, oh no, sorry, here are some ways to get involved. I've just gone over my 30 minutes. So I'm gonna now hand over to Margaret, it's fine. Thank you very much. I'm very lucky to be following Toby. Toby, Toby um, introduced me to Wikidata along with Andy Mavitt, um, pigs on things. Um, and, uh, those demonstrations of the power of a graphical database are just fantastic. Um, who could not wish to exploit Wikidata in all its power? Now, for the things that I'm interested in, which are biota, I don't get the right answers because I don't have all the data. And so my Wikidata journey has been to put names to apne plants, put, uh, sorry, put author names to apne plants, to upload os lichen, to upload os fungi. And then being involved in Wiki Loves Earth, somebody asked me how many animals are missing from, oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, flick it. 
Thank you, I'll go from here. Um, and I didn't know the answer. Well, I know it's roughly 170,000 because um, Wikimedia Australia um, gave me a fellowship last year to help add more identifiers to animals and using um, the Australian Faunal Directory as a basis. And there are a number of us who played with it. So there was Toby, obviously, me, Annie, Aronce, and um, also Siobhan Leachman, who many of you will know. And my aim is to get correct answers. I would like to be able to say that um, Stebbing, whoever he might be, that Stebbing authored 500 taxa. I can't do it if the data aren't there. So I have been putting up data um, and it's a really, you know, the, the queries that Toby showed you are lovely because um, you only need a random selection of movie stars to get that story. You only need a random selection of the total number of chemists. But if you want to actually find out how many taxa Stebbing authored, whoever he may be, um, you really do need to have the data in there. And that's been my mission for a good long while. Um, <laughs> we will get there eventually. Um, so uh, I have a beautiful picture, which you can't see. It's a little amphiphod. I don't know how deep it was found, but a lot of it comes from the Victorian Museum and it's um, a very decorative little number. <laughs> Can we go to the slides that I uploaded instead and forget my computer, which is a real pity because I'd wanted to do a live demonstration of using Open Refine with you and I can't do that. I might be able to talk you through it perhaps, so who knows. So I wanted to show you a, a, a faster way of putting up the information that I'm interested in showing or finding. And I want to link um, taxa with their authors, with their publications. And this is a relatively easy task if you're looking at plants. It's much, much harder with animals. Remember animals cover everything from bacteria to whales. And the people who work in fish know nothing of the people who work in bacteria. And so in fact, when we were uploading um, the Australian Faunal Directory, we found that we had, um, Oh, there was one genus, it was a valid genus, and the same genus name covered four kinds of animals, fabulous stuff. Um, similarly, author names, um, they're meant to be unique. The author, author, zoological author abbreviation is meant to be unique. It's not, and it varies from database to database. And you could see that um, at the WOW conference where somebody, where the Lontar palm was put up. And the abbreviation was given as Lin, yet um, as far as I know, the standard abbreviation for Linnaeus is L dot, if you're talking about a plant. So it should have been L dot. But I'm absolutely certain that whoever put up that name consulted a database. Uh, so the databases often have author abbreviations incorrect. They rarely have the author name. So a major problem is to find the author names. Now, one of the nice things when we ever get my slides up um, it, about the Australian Faunal Directory on which I have worked so hard. Um, so my plan is to look at the Australian Faunal Directory publication, show you what it gives you. Uh, okay, so this is this shows the problem in almost every Wikidata. I pulled this up for the, one of the publications I wanted to do live with you, but obviously I'm not going to be doing. Um, you can see that Stebbing, the author name for this genus is in black. And that's how it is in most Wikidatas for many, many biota items. No one has a clue who Stebbing is. Hands up who knows who Stebbing is. Wonderful. I, all right, okay, show me that. Okay, he's a bloke called Thomas Roscoe Reed Stebbing, and I'm not sure what his birth dates are, but the point is, how do you find this out? there must be thousands of people called Stebbing. So the trick is, if I can manage to go the page down, I can't see. Um, oh, the, this is just showing what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to put in um, 
We're going to try to put in a, um, a name we're going to, as a qualifier for the taxon name. Oh, my goodness me. Um, we're going to try to put in the year. And what we're also going to try to put in is stated in the reference in the reference for the name. We're trying to put stated in the publication. Now, that's quite complicated. We've got three things. We've got the taxon, the author, if not half a dozen, and the publication. So quite difficult to do. And I'm not sure where I go. Um, uh, this is this is the um, valid name. And in this one, we put up something quite different. Um, we want to put in um, the fact that it actually has um, an original combination. And this is, um, the author is still in, uh, under um, zoological nomenclature stebbing, but it's bracketed to show that um, the name has been changed and it's a recombination. So there's a whole pile of things we want to do when we get our things in Open Refine. Well, you can see this is our publication. There are two databases I know in um, in in animals that give um, publication IDs, which should go up into Wikidata. So the publication ID. Am I doing something no, strange? No, no, no. Keep talking. Oh, thank you. Um, so one of the things about this is the um, left-hand side, I'll try this, um, has the, um, the names as published by Stebbing. And so they are the original names. The um, right-hand side set of names are the names as the accepted names by the Australian Fauna Directory, but notice, well, no, not notice, but in fact, names accepted by the Australian Faunal Directory do not are not necessarily the accepted names by any other database. Um, and so you really do need to reference this stuff. Um, and the only ones we're interested in putting up are ones where we have the species epithet being the same as, the same in both names, in both the final valid name and the other ones. So for example, Ampelesca asinaces um, doesn't change. So the original name is the final name and they're the ones that we'd be interested in putting up if I were going to do my live presentation, which I'm not. Um, and, but we can see, um, well, we can't see in that slide, which is a pity, um, that we've got this possibility of, um, original name and accepted name, current accepted name, which may not match. Um, sorry. Um, I copied and pasted that because after all, these all came from the one publication. So I could put them up really easily by just saying, this is the publication, this is the author, this is the year. Stebbing, no, 1888, publication, well, you don't know and you can't actually see because you, I don't have my um, live computer. Um, I can? Yeah, yeah. But it should work. Right. All right, okay. Um, so this is, this is what the open I we pulled I pulled the CSV file into open refine. Now open refine is lovely. Um, you can break up fields and I've obviously broken up the field that had the um, taxon name. I've removed the, the stepping 1980 uh, sorry 1888 um, to get the name as it would reconcile in, in, in Wikidata. I've broken up the um, these are mainly, species, so I've broken them up into parent and reconciled them. And you can see that I've reconciled them because the reconciled names are in blue. And you can also see at the top of the column that it's green. Um, there's a, and only when you've reconciled various things can you start to create what's called a schema, which looks exactly like what you have when you go to Wikidata. So in Wikidata, in Wikidata, Sorry, this is why my schema for my open refine. And this one, um, where um, 
we're actually putting up information for the valid name. So I'm putting up the tax on author, I'm putting up the tax on uh, the year of publication, and I'm putting up a reference, I think, yes. And the reference happens to be the um, Australian Fawn Directly publication list that we had because, um, and so I have something like stated in the Australian Formal Directory and I actually then put up the Australian, public, pub, Australian Formal Directory publication ID and I put a date, which I haven't displayed because I wanted to display um, the fact that I put a tax on author citation. I put that in because of the fact that the abbreviations do not match across databases. So it's a way of referencing the fact that this is um, the, the zoological author abbreviation for this person uh, in this database might not be in another one. So it's useful. Um, the other thing I've put, uh, because these particular set of items were ones where the valid name differed from the original combination. So I've linked them together and I've said the original combination for this new name, which is a recombination of the old, is... Um, whatever we found it to be. So it's the one that was also reconciled. It was the shortened valid name. And um, this moves on because Open Refine is really very nice. I actually am putting up an item, another Q item as well. I'm putting up, I'm going to modify the Q item for the original combination as well. And so in this one, again, I put up the same author names as qualifiers, same year as a qualifier, but my reference this time says stated in, and you can't see it, which is a real pity, um, stated in the publication. And, and I actually bring up the publication for here because I can have it in the schema because it's common to the entire set. So I put it in the schema. I haven't bothered to put it in the, the column arrangement, I've just put it in the schema. This is the publication and um, it matches, it finds it because I had, of course, already put this into Wikidata um, or someone else had, not sure about this one. Um, and the other thing that I've put up there, can you see it? No, um, I've also put up that the subject has the role. Now, if you think about the structure that Toby showed you, another way of talking about that Q item, property, Q item, which is one of the forms of the statement, is subject, verb, object. And often the subject, which is the Q item that you're modifying, um, is called the subject in, in a lot of the um, um, property descriptions. And sometimes when you're describing the object, so here, or well, going back, um, this time, um, you'll see that we added a, 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 um, a qualifier saying the object has the role. So the object there is the taxon name that we've given it, which was, oh, who knows, it's um, um, the true, va the valid name according to the Australian Formal Directory. Um, and we've said this object has the role of being a recombination. So it's recombining. Um, and using the old epithet together with a new genus or a different genus, it might be whatever. Um, sorry, move on down. Um, we looked at that. So, why use Australian Faunal Directory? Oh, there's a, one reason. Um, it, sorry, this is this is worms. I know this is the this is the world register of marine species um, which covers the entire world marine species so you'd think that would be the obvious one to use as an Australian I do need to use the Australian Formal Directory because I know that while it should be the case that the Australian Formal Directory is a subset of the world um, marine or you know the the marine fauna uh, is a subset of, of the world um, register of marine species it's not and these things overlap in really curious ways at one point I had you know Venn diagrams showing the total mismatches but it was too much to show and I didn't 
Um, but Worms, because it is, um, covers the whole world, is, is probably one of the places you should go to. Um, it suffers from the fact that as we go down it, um, um, if you, that's probably too hard to read, but we had a source, but we don't have any pages on this um, list of um, taxa. We can see that something is an original um, description, and we can see that it's now accepted as something else. Uh, but what we can't see is what the page is in, in, the, um, in the publication. And Worms typically does not give page, pages, whereas the Australian Forum Directory does. So if I know it's a publication relating to Australian fauna, I'll probably use Australian Forum Directory as first thing. I think I might be ready to move on. Yeah. Now, this is a different publication. Um, and it's um, it's much shorter when we go down. So now oh, that's looking good. Um, this is Stebbing 1910, and we're going to have a look at putting it up. Um, so I should have. Um, you can see this has just been pulled across just as a straight text file. I like using text files because I know what the you know, things are at the end and at the beginning. And I pull that into, or I'm about to pull that into my open refine, which I have already open, I hope. So I need to choose a file. I think it was, whoops, Stebbing 1910 Worms. And I'm going to go next. And um, you can see that my header is not going in the right spot. If I change the choice there, it goes to the right spot, which is good. And I'm going to just create the project. Now, all I'm going to do is to try and break up this line into original um, combination and whatever else there is. So I'm going to use um, Stebbing 1888 as my divisor, a thing that I'm going to divide it on. So I'm going to use, going to click on this column and I'm going to say, edit column, split into several columns. And what I'll type in there is, comma, um, and I don't want to remove the column. It's usually not a good idea to remove the column. It's your basic, you know, starting data. And it's much easier to leave it there. So I'm going to do that. That starts to look good. Now you can see that's quite interesting. Um, some of, you can see which one have a new name. So Amaryllis bathycephala has changed its name to Bamaruca bathycephala. Um, so that's not one that we're going to put up this time. We're going to just deal with the ones that are uh, blank here. So let's um, select on that. So let's choose a facet here, text facet. And blank is what we choose, just 17. Great, apply. Now, some of those look pretty horrible. Um, and what's really nice about having chosen um, to use Stebbing 1888 as the break thing is that we've got some things that don't really belong. Um, I think I'm going to leave anything that didn't break. Uh, that should have broken. Oh, no, it's 1910. I did 1888. Silly deal. Um, go back. Okay. Let's um, undo. Sorry. That wasn't my best effort, um, thinking about the other one. I'm breaking on stepping 1910. Oops. I can just do it. Oh, no, I need to do it on all of them, so I need to reset. Oh, it's good when you make mistakes. Zero. Um, I'm just going to undo. Oh, I'm going to... Yes, I'm 18 rows. Yes, 18 rows is about right. It's not quite. Um, last uh yes that one i should have mm. 
Horrible, horrible. That's one that I would wish to exclude. <laughs> so I've got to undo this. Why is it not undoing? Oh, I know. Create project. Okay, I want to just create project. That's good. And now let's go to the split. And we're splitting on a different thing. We are splitting on. We're editing the column. We're splitting into several columns. We are using blank, stebbing, oops, 1910. That will be better. Oh, it helps if you write the right thing. We need a blank. Because that's how it goes. Now let's hope. I'm going to move that column and go OK. And what have I done? A oh, long one, that's fine. What's happened to? I think you had a comma before stepping. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I know I've got grot on my screen, and I thought it was just the grot. Um, <laughs> not good, not good. We will get there eventually, um, or not, as the case may be. Choose files. Stebbing, I need 10 worms. Next, don't get yourself in it. And we want to go by text there and with create. Okay, we'll try again. Let's hope I can spell correctly this time. I'm editing the column and I'm splitting into several columns. And I don't know why there's that stuff there. Now, the reason I'm putting the full thing there and not just stebbing is that um, sometimes the database is wrong and it lists um, it lists taxa, well, it's not wrong, it lists taxa that are also mentioned or treated taxonomically but are not named as original, you know, it's not an original description for, of, for that taxon. So I don't want to deal with those. I don't want to deal with taxonomic treatment at all today, or but I'll keep it in. I was, I don't want to remove the column. And I go, okay. <sighs> Looking slightly better. As you can see, that first one, which is the wrong publication, or at least not the publication I'm wishing to talk about, the 1910 one, um, is all these others are looking pretty good. So I'm going to do a click on that and I'm going to um, facet on all and I'm going to facet on flag, and I'm going to just include those. There's probably heaps more. No, those are looking okay, and I don't care. I'm going to rename this, as you do. I'm editing the column in renaming it. Um, so I'm renaming the column, and I'm going to call it original. Whoops, if I could spell. And and I'm now going to try and um, reconcile these. Now, in reconciling um, taxa, it can be really tricky because lots of people put synonyms in the aliases, and that means you often get a reconciliation when you probably don't want one. As far as I'm concerned, a synonym requires a reference, and it should be written as a property, property synonym of such and such and a reference saying who synonymized it because after all these animals or these plants or whatever they are uh, there's one specimen in that museum and there's another specimen authored and discussed by a totally different author um, someone had to do the work to say no no sorry these two are the same so you need a reference so I I hate I reconcile very I unclick that and I start reconciling and it give, makes a lot more work it's really tedious but it's tricky um, I, I just I'm just going to match that cell that looks like the same name so I'll match it that's a hundred percent so I'll match it and I might stop there because I don't really want to go very far I'm going to just star these and 
we may or may not get there. I may unstar them later. I'm going to start building my um, schema. And so I go to Wikidata and edit wiki schema. I've got the original, so that's good. I'm going to add an item, which is actually adding my subject. This is my subject in my Q item property and potential Q item. Um, so I want to drag that item there. I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to add a label. I'm not going to add a description, but I am going to add a statement. And the statement's going to be um, taxon name. Oops. Thing isn't, oops. And Tom, you'll have to interrupt me when I'm totally whatever. Taxon name, I drag down. Oops, I'm in the schema. Why can't I see? I drag down original. I drag down a qualifier. Oh, it's nearly time, is it? Ooh, taxon author. Okay, I'll just, I'll, I'm going to taxon author. Um, let me just put in these qualifiers. Um, we're going to not get very far. I need a taxon author. I'm going to put in, now again, I'm not going to drag an item because this one is known and you see we have the choice it comes up just as it would in in wikidata and not, the only other thing i'm going to add now is i'm going to add a may i add a year just the year because we have the year in that oh we don't have the year i didn't grab the year i would then what, what we can do is we can make, take a look at our preview and you can see that we've added the tax on year if i were to use quick statements which is the plan and where I had hoped to be. Um, if I were to use quick statements, this does not add as a separate um, statement. It, add, it adds to the already existing statement. So quick statements is my preference for adding this stuff. And I would go at this point to um, export to quick statements. And that is where I would stop. And I think Tom is telling me I've more than had my time. Um, I... Not at all. <laughs> what I'd like to be able to do is thank both um, Toby and Margaret for bringing, taking us into areas of Wikidata which we've probably never been before and giving us a really good insight. Thanks. So thank you very much, no, thank you. Margaret and Toby. Really appreciate the effort. Realising full well that if anybody anybody wishes to pursue any of the details further it would be well worth um checking either the uh pad etherpad etherpad or contacting either toby or margaret because i'm sure they'd be only too pleased to help i, I hope that's for, for those who are not so familiar with data i let's hope that's not too deep but enough to give you an idea of how some marvelous things you can do so thank you, Toby and Margaret. I, I do see a value in um, connecting the um, internet and connecting all these databases, which are often professional databases. So a tool that does that uh, I think is useful for science as well as uh, the world. Um, and I, I guess I'd like to see Wikidata in the future being um, a database that is reliable and relied on, uh, and that therefore all of us have a role to play in that. Um, going further with the IDs, um, Wikidata is the place that people go to for that. So um, iNaturalist copies Wikipedia articles, but GBIF copies all our identifiers. So I was really thrilled when I first nominated um, the Northern Territory Flora ID, and I suddenly saw it appear on GBIF. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it links, and then people can see that there are these identifiers, you know, and, um, and you can see that they're in conflict. If we bring it together, other people don't, you know, they're all separate silos speaking to themselves. And we bring it together. I'm a statistician, but um, 
And for that reason, I value data. And it really irritates me when I can't get the right answer. Now, I know I can't get the right answer, but what I wanted, first of all, to do was to be able to say, James K. Lowry authored 438 taxa. Now, I can't do that if the wiki data aren't there. You can't actually do it on any database because they're just name strings on databases. And so you've got no idea. Uh, that's not true for um, IPNI, which does actually identify Heidi Mert, Mert. Um, but for animals, um, you don't have any way of getting at them. And so if I'm writing an article about a person like James K. Lowry, I want to know all of the taxa he authored. So I actually pull down a CSV for James K. for Lowry and I identify it. So I'm disambiguating his name. I use an IRMNG file, which is a uh, interim register of marine genera and other bits and pieces. Um, and it, it has a nice download that downloads by author. Uh, very few, well, no other database so far that I've encountered downloads by author. So I use that. But I want to know what the taxa are. I mean, I think the encyclopedia is failing badly if it can't tell you how many taxa this man authored. Um, and I also use it as a basis for generating, you know, future articles um, that relate to him. And so he's not an orphan. So I've got at least, you know, I've written four articles for Lowry's taxa. Um, but that's, you know... I, you contribute because you want it there. I want it there. <laughs> that's absolutely right. Nice, nice summary from Barry. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, was is there anybody else with any further questions? Okay, well, I'll say thank you very much once again to Toby and Margaret. And, and thank you all for coming and listening. Thank you very much.